Hi, and welcome back to Exchange Street Capital. I'm your host, Rick Allenbach, the fourth. Um, my dad it would probably be here waving his hands. He's probably off somewhere talking to the wall, but um, why don't we get started? Talking about V shape, U shape, L shape, or. There's a lot of words. Wait, how do you guys watch this stuff? Anyway, um, let's get started. My, my initial response. No clue what that is. Hey, RP! Alright, between you and me, I was very nice about my dad. Um, before I go, I would like you to subscribe to my buddies Poise underscore Vibes and Clap Z on this YouTube platform. Thanks. I'm sorry about that. I was running a little late and my son uh, got started without me. One thing I can always be sure about is that he will never say anything bad about me. So I'm not sure where he ended off. So we'll start from the beginning. Welcome to Exchange Street Capital. I'm Rick Allenbach the third, and uh, tonight we're going to talk about the economic recovery and what we think it's going to happen. Everybody's been just inundated with information in terms of terms of like V shape, U shape, L shape, or and I'm going to tell you what the or is. I'm going to tell you what I believe is going to happen. I'm going to tell you what I believe is going to happen. What I thought. In January, in February, March, April, and now in May, and I still believe it. So let's get started, right? Um, v shape. So obviously, a V shape is we got killed. You know, the March lows um, down. Some indexes were down or were, were halved, but but we but we got blown out. So my initial response was it would be a V shape recovery based on economic indicators, the strength of the markets, uh, un uh, unemployment prior to COVID, the need for our services, the way the other countries were performing, small businesses performance, etc, etc, etc. That was my initial response. I've been buying stocks all through and quite frankly I've been re rewarded. The hiccup we're up 30% since March lows. Not bad. You could, you could take your money and people don't, this is what people have to understand. When you lose 50% and then you gain 30 back, you're not, you don't, you don't have 20% more to go. If you lose 50%, you have to get 100% back to get back to where you were. However, we're up a whole lot. So some people are now coming to me saying, should I be taking the money now and running? Well, I'm not. I'm not, I want people to be able to sleep at night, but the point remains is my initial response, buy rewarded, we're up since March lows. Here's where I didn't like. Morgan Stanley uh, thinks most investors no longer think we'll, re, we'll retest March lows. I don't know what investors they're talking to. They must be talking to the guy in North Carolina who's protesting with a uh, missile launcher on his back. I saw that picture. He must be talking to those, they must be talking to those kind of type of people. I mean, most analysts I, I know don't know livestock from preferred stock, but nevertheless, I don't like that they said this because it throws a wrench in what I believe. Um, I'm a contrarian and I, I, when I go against analysts, I win. If you read that analysts like something or don't like something, go the other way. Uh, Morgan Stanley thinks we will end 2% off Friday's lows. I'd take that. Everyone would take that for this year. Not saying it's going to happen. Not saying that's my recommendation. That's what a V-shape recovery looks like. That was my initial response. Based on the 30% uptick and only the 30% uptick. Not any of the news. Good, bad, or indifferent. Uh, but I, I have a hitch because of that 30% uptick. And let me just step back and pause. What we're talking about is uh, economic recovery and what the markets are going to do. Obviously, my heart goes out to all those who are suffering, all those that, are, that, that have passed away or have loved ones that have passed away from this virus. Um, but we're, this channel is talking about what kind of recovery the United States is going to have, the, you know, the stock market. So we go to a U shape. As you can see, the U means we're going to trough longer before we rise back up. 
the V, we get hit hard, we, we bounce right back like a boomerang. Um, the U can hurt, and it, it's not just a flat U, it can, it, can, it can dig deep in. Most analysts I speak to or read believe that we're going to have a U shape. Um, they expect a long U and plummet through March low, so they think we're going to dig in worse than it was. Uh, okay, that's not that hard of a recommendation, especially that since we're off thir uh, we're up 30 percent from the March lows. You know, analysts that go on such a limb, uh, you know, see two to four year recovery. Yeah, well, what define recovery in the market is going to take two to four years to get back on track in America. People aren't going to want to go to restaurants. Yes, things are going to change, but we're talking about you know the markets here. Goldman Sachs sees 18 to 20 percent downside. Wow, way to go out on a limb. Way to make your million dollar salary by predicting what honestly my uh, my four year old daughter could predict. Yeah, we're gonna. We're, what are we gonna just go straight up from here? Of course not. Um, but 18 to 20 percent is what it is. So again, I they don't know livestock from preferred stock. Um, so this this contradicts this a little bit. Uh, I think they think it'll go down more. Um, it's amazing to me how many people have either credited themselves or been credited by their grandparents where, and they're living in their basement for predicting the 08 crash. I mean, it's amazing. On, on Twitter, on, on all the financial channels, I mean, that must be the way to get on TV to say, hey, I, I mean, first of all, my son, who you just saw, was born in 2008. His first sentence in 2008, when he was born, was, short the market. Okay? It was obvious that we were, that, that we were overblown in the real estate and, and the equities market. I mean, you didn't have to be a genius to know that, but it's like, it's like Bob Dole, I mean, I'm sorry, Al Gore and the Internet. Everybody seems to have, 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 have known that that was coming or been the one to say that it was coming, which is just silly. It's silly. Um, so this is the easy route. This is the safe route. This is the route that you can't really lose. Oh, I told you things were going to suck. I told you they were going to be bad. You know, look at, look at all the suffering. I, of course. Are you are you're watching the news? No. And you shouldn't be either. Turn off the god darn news. You know, watch CNBC for like 20 minutes just to see things that are going. Then they then that gets ridiculous. Okay. Read the Wall Street Journal. Read Barron's. Stick to your principles and fundamentals, and 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 push forward. I told you this was going to be a renaissance, and it is. The U shape is the easy way. So my th this is the only thing. This is the only thing that pissed me off when they said that because they took credence into what I'm thinking. They, they, some of them are over here. Goldman's here, good, because they're wrong. It's not going to be U-shaped. I'm going to tell you what I, what, what I think it's going to be. Here's the one that I've been seeing all week. This is, this is the one where, um, based on all the information, this is the one where people saw 20 million unemployed and the stock market was up 500 points and it was, they took their picture of that and they tweeted it and they put it on their Pinterest and everything else and they said, oh, this is, this is madness. Okay, well, it really isn't when you look at under, underneath the hood in terms of the fundamentals. It's not madness. Okay? The L shape says we're going to get killed, which we did, and we're going to have 10 to 20 years uh, before we get back to where we were. Okay? And I've heard two examples from folks on very accredited uh, international channels speak about these things with half truths and ridiculous um, uh, examples of, uh, of, of, uh, of similarities between now and then, and it's nonsensical. So I'm going to talk about them. First is the 1990 uh, Japanese crash. Um, so, you know, the guy leads off and he's like, <laughs> here's a trick question. What's the, uh, 
What came back first, the Japanese stock market or the Japanese real estate market? <laughs> Neither. <laughs> okay, they, they have it. That's a hilarious anecdote, sir. Um, but why don't you get to the point? So they have it. And, and, and he's comparing that until now, and that's what he believes, that we're going to be in this ridiculous 20-year L-shape or 10-year L-shape recovery. So the Japanese crash, let's talk about why. So we had the Plaza Accord. Basically, Japan was kicking everybody's ass in terms of trade. Germany, United Kingdom, France, United States, we didn't have our shit right. So we said, we came back and we made, or we, Japan agreed to, to, to tighten things up and to give everybody else a chance in terms of trade. Then you had financial liberalization. The U.S. recession, which we blamed the yen versus the dollar, not why. U.S. recession happened because we sucked. We came into the 70s weak, uh, and we continued weak until Reaganomics started. Um, so what do we do? What do we do? When, what does the United States do when it gets weak? It strengthens up. It tightens up. So what they do? Japan eased restrictions because we... Got it. We got we got our our balls back and decided to, to become the global giant that we are. Um, plus, our market came back. Um, the easing of restrictions caused huge financial deals and real estate deals with the yen, creating a real estate bubble in Japan. And we took our country back. No longer did they. You know, on this cover of Time magazine, you saw the United States flag burning into the Japan flag. Well, that was over. We decided our country and the, the global economy was going to run through us permanently. Um, so when that happens and they start to weaken, monetary policy, trouble. Everybody wants to cut Fed rate, discount rate, what have you. Let's cut, 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 help us, help us. That's not work, that's not work our ass off to get things back. Let, let's get help. So they acted too quickly and they doubled down. In fact, from 1986 to 1989, um, the discount rate in Japan went from 5% to 2.5%. It caused massive damage. On top of it, let's throw in more legislation. Tax, tax changes. Land lease laws. Okay? Buried them. But we innovated and came through the 90s as the global power. This is not what's going on now. It, they've never recovered from that. So yes, that was an L shape. To hear, them, hear this gentleman compare that to what's going on now is farcical at best. The second one that I'm hearing is the 1929 crash. What? Research the 1929 crash. Drivers and chauffeurs. I only wrote drivers here because I can't spell chauffeur. They were making more money than the people they were driving around because they were selling liberty bonds and mortgaging their homes. They were mar to, to be in the market. Margin was at its greatest height. 300 million shares back in 1929. So we're borrowing from our homes selling bonds on margin. The market has to keep going up. Oh, by the way, few know this, there was a massive economic recession the summer before. And we were monopolized by banks, a few banks and industrials. That's not happening now. At least not by a few. Um, there was no innovation at all. We were sitting fat high on the hog. In addition, to make to buy more stock, holding companies were created, which which all that does was created more debt. Non-liquid bank loans. Because of course they're non-liquid, because well, the banks were doing great, everybody was doing great. They're fine. As long as everything gets going keeps going up. It's like Bernie Madoff. Yeah, as long as it keeps going up. I had family that lost money with Bernie Madoff. I looked at a statement, it looked like my eight-year-old made it. I was like, this is fake. And they're like, man, no, if, you can't, if you can't beat that, well, I can't. I'm sorry. A, a, a dot matrix printer in the 90s? Or, I mean, I'm sorry, 2004? Really? Um, but, like, it took 20 years to get back 
to where we were at the height of 1929. Does any of this sound like it's happening now? None of it. We're not over leveraged like 2008. We're not selling homes as a society, are mortgaging our houses to be in the stock market. Margin is not over, you know, over abundance. The credit is fine. Um, we're not selling other assets, quite frankly. We're diversifying very nice, nicely. We have huge innovation, massive. And our innovation in pets.com and vertical net, it's Amazon and and, and we're talking about telehealth, fintech. Look at the massive innovators. They're making money paying dividends. And it's, it's going to keep on rolling. Um, uh, so th this, I mean, to hear these two in the same week over and over again, what? I, it's, it's unheard of. You tell me there's an L shape, but give me a god darn good reason. Don't. These are so weak. In five minutes, these, I mean, we're not even close to this. So here's what's going to happen. Again, I originally said V-shape. The only reason I'm changing it to a W-shape, and I haven't heard W yet, so maybe I'll patent that or copyright it. Um, yeah, we got killed. We farted around. We're 30% up. Yeah, do... Do I think we could V? Okay, but yeah, yeah, okay. Like our like the geniuses at Goldman Sachs, we could go down 18%. Of course we're gonna it's gonna be rocky. It's a global pandemic that's got everybody sick and dying, and the global economy has stopped, we're on our homes. Yeah, we're gonna suffer. And then we're gonna shoot up. This is this is the best part. One of the reasons that they think U shape, or one of the reasons they think recession or depression is because typically, so says Morgan Stanley and J.P. Morgan and Wells Fargo and Goldman Sachs, typically uh, a leading in indicator out of a recession is banks and discretionary. And right now, big tech and pharma are leading us. So what? Yeah, big tech is leading us. And they're making money doing it. They're not just hot. They're not just the big idea. They're innovating. They're helping. They're pushing for the future. You know what I mean? They're, they're paying dividends. Better, some, some better dividends than the banks. And pharma. Well, because they're coming up with a COVID vaccine and that's why they're up. Bullshit! A few of them are, are doing great because of COVID. Big pharma is recession-proof. And it's going to be, as we live longer, it's going to happen. It, it, it's going to continue to be there. What they're doing with CAR-T and gene... And, 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 and gene uh, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, genetics and cell therapy is amazing. And it's not going away. And in this, I told you a renaissance. I told you what was going to happen was the, the, the little guys and gals who weren't allowed to play in the, in, 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 the, in, the, in the old fraternity of how things were was over. And everyone was going to have a voice to come out of this horrible situation in a different way. And people are doing that. And that's not going to stop. So the, the people are, now you can say, well, Rick, Big Pharma is part of the issue. Well, is it? Okay. But they are, not only are they going to cure COVID, they're going to cure stuff we've never heard of. They're going to completely change the way things happen. So I don't give a flying shit that they're leading us out. Okay? Well, but banks and discretionary are doing terrible. No shit they're doing terrible. Banks are barely open. Interest rates are nothing. They're not lending. The PPP is, is, is essentially a, a forgivable grant by the SPA. They're not selling products. And there's no investment banking going on. There's no M&A. I've turned down 20 deals since COVID because it, there's a lot of uncertainty. So, of course, they're not making any money. That, but that's why you should be buying them. Discretionary spending is down, so that they lead us out of an economy. Of where the hell are we going to spend our money? We can't leave. Restaurants, malls, uh, vacations. Well, well, of course it's down. Buy, buy it down. People are not. What do you? What do you think? We're going to live in caves for the rest of our lives? 
I mean, it's silliness. Imagine when these do come back. These aren't going to now plummet. You think Amazon's going to get hurt when people start spending money outside again? No. You think Microsoft's going to get hurt? No. Buy the banks. Buy the ones that are hurt. It makes no... Yes, it's changed. I hope so. You know, but with all due respect to, to, the, to the analysts, you, they need to change. So, I love that big tech and pharma are leading us. Because when the others come back, and they will, and it will be slower than you think, but it's going to happen. Um, we'll be back. One thing I don't like, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, and Google, five companies make up 21% of the S&P 500, the 500 largest companies in the, in the, in the country, um, the index the entire world looks to every single day. That's bad. Too, too concentrated. For the record, Apple, Amazon, and Microsoft are owned by Exchange Street Capital. Facebook is not owned, will never be owned. They could give it to me for free. I'd put it in a shredder or donate it to charity, although that would be a disservice to the charity. Um, I, Google's great. I just don't happen to own it. Um, too much. Too much of the S&P 500 into five, five companies. Uh, one more thing I want to say. <laughs> My friends will get a kick out of this. Uh, I feel like uh, the Admiral in Top Gun... After Cougar loses his, uh, you know, he gets scared. He says, uh, you know, I, I, I still can't believe I, I have to, you know, I, I, have, to, I have to do this. Uh, you two, you know, idiots are going to Top Gun. I still can't believe it. I can't believe that I'm going against, for one single trade, uh, the Oracle of Omaha, my, one, one of my idols, Warren Buffett. Um, he, he held way too much. Airline stock, he was he he was right to sell. He was late to sell, but Southwest is a buy. It's an absolute buy. Maybe not today. Maybe not tomorrow. Before 2020, Southwest Airlines needs to be in your portfolio. Uh, 